Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So the Most High said, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people. Who is this making reference to? The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians that came over here on cargo slave ships, the descendants of slaves. God says, your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people. As you know, American history was given unto Esau, who's the so-called white man. Dr. James Marion Sims developed pioneering tools and surgical techniques related to women's reproductive health and is credited as the father of modern gynecology. The 19th century physician has been idolized with statues in New York City, South Carolina, and Pennsylvania. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So the Most High said, thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. When did this occur during slavery? When our foremothers, our forefathers was given unto the hand of the so-called white man to serve him as a slave, to serve him in servitude as a servant. After 30 operations on one woman, a 17-year-old enslaved woman named Anakar, who had a very traumatic labor and delivery, he finally perfected his method. After four years of experimentation, afterward, he began to practice on white women using anesthesia, which was new to the medical field at the time. While some doctors didn't trust anesthesia, Sim's decision to not use it or any other numbing technique was based on his misguided belief that black people didn't experience pain like white people did. It's a notion that persists today, according to a study conducted at the University of Virginia and published in the April 4th, 2016 Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. So just in case you were confused, the Most High said that we would have yokes of irons on our necks. In this particular time, whenever we had to go to the doctor, go to the dentist, who did we have to go to? Experimenting on slave children, writer and medical ethicist Harriet Washington says Sims' racist beliefs affected more than his gynecology experiments. Before and after his gynecology experiments, he also tested surgical treatments on enslaved black children in an effort to treat neonatal tetanus with little to no success. Ye are all physicians of no value. So God says they are physicians of no value. So this man was a physician of no value. Why? Because a lot of our foremothers perished in the name of medicine under this man. The same thing with the Tuskegee experiments and so forth. All these different evil practices that's practiced among Esau using our people as test subjects. The Zika virus, Ebola virus, and so forth. Sims also believed that African Americans were less intelligent than white people and thought it was because their skulls grew too quickly around their brain. He would operate on African American children using a shoemaker's tool to pry their bones apart and loosen their skulls. In the 1850s, Sims moved to New York and opened the first ever women's hospital where he continued testing controversial medical treatments on his patients. When any of Sims' patients died, the blame, according to him, lay squarely with the sloth and ignorance of their mothers and the black midwives who attended them. He did not believe anything was wrong with his methods. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. God says, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies Keep in mind that the enemies that we had to serve was those who had us in servitude and slavery. The so-called white man. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Come on. In hunger. In what? In hunger. In hunger. Come on. And in thirst. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. Today, J. Marion Sims continues to loom large in the medical field, celebrated as a medical trailblazer. His statue sits opposite the New York Academy of Medicine in Central Park, New York City, as well as in South Carolina and outside his old medical school. Now let's examine the hypocrisy of the country that allows this monument to continue to stand in the commemoration of Sims and modern medicine and perseverance of good health for all. Imagine if monuments were erected in the U.S. or Germany to honor renowned Nazi physicians such as Joseph Mengel, also known as the Angel of Death, or Edward Wirths or Arabert Heim. There would be a tumultuous uproar. See my point? 
Sims research was conducted on enslaved black women without anesthesia. Medical ethicists, historians, and others have called for those monuments to be removed. 